What's up everyone, my name is Joris. In our last video we talked about how you could start saving if you have never done it before and in this video we will address some other ways of saving and what you should do as soon as you receive your paycheck. The first step is to pay yourself first. The second you get your paycheck, take a big part of it and put it towards your savings account. If you have been tracking your expenses well, it will be easy to decide how much you can put aside every month. Make this an automated process so you will not be tempted to spend the money anyway this month. If you're not sure how much you can save up every month, start up small. And if you have leftovers at the end of the month, see number six, you can boost up your monthly savings. An important part of this step is to track your savings and make sure that you save the same amount every month. It will be easier to keep the ball rolling and you won't need to dig into the savings account if there is a financial setback. In an ideal situation, there should be only an inflow in the account, so no outflow at all. If you have never saved before and you do not know how to start, I have made a video explaining how you can start out small and make saving fun. You can see the video by clicking right there. Step 2. Make sure you have an emergency savings fund. To make sure you do not need to touch your savings, it is crucial to set up an emergency fund. This account is purely cash, easily accessible and should be only used in emergencies. If there are unexpected costs like your house, your car, your washing machine of computer or you were to lose your job, this account will help you during those difficult times. In Europe we have several social benefits which aid us when we are financially in dire straits. So I would suggest creating an emergency fund consisting of about three months of expenses along with a few thousand euros according to the worth of your car, your house or major electronics. In most cases, five to ten thousand euros would definitely suffice. On the other hand, if you do not feel safe enough with just about ten thousand euros in an emergency fund, just add a little more until you do. Step number three, create different savings accounts for different goals. The most important thing is to create your emergency fund, so make sure that is set up before saving for anything else. After that, you can save up for holidays, a new car, an expensive watch. By setting up separate accounts for each savings goal, this way you can visualize your progress. If you want to go to a holiday in about 8 months and it will cost you 800 euros, you should save every month 100 euros in that savings account. By saving this way, you'll be able to pay for everything outright and you will not have to take credit for paying for it. Taking out a loan for a holiday or a washing machine, a laptop or something else is really not a good idea. It will cost you way more in the interest than if you were to pay it at once. Step number four, invest your savings. A follow-up from step number one, do not just leave your money in the bank account. In Belgium, the return on savings account is 0.11% yearly, which do not compare well to the inflation of around 1.7 to 2% yearly. Use the saved up money to invest in ETFs or other investments where the expected return is higher than the inflation. Do mind, however, that the more return you want, the more risk you will have to take. However, there are several relatively safe investment ways to save your money. A worldwide tracker will follow the global markets and has a nice yearly return. But beware that the return is not a guarantee over a shorter period of time. In a bad year like this one, the returns might not be what you expected them to be. But on the other hand, if you save consistently over the few years, you'll see some great returns. Step number five, take out loans, but only the useful ones. Taking out a loan to go to a holiday is just a bad idea. This should be common knowledge, but unfortunately it is not. The same goes with credit card use. If you cannot afford it, just do not buy it. A nice rule to follow is that if you cannot buy five of them, you should not be able to afford one. This rule obviously does not apply for cars and houses. Those are some of the few exceptions where a loan might be useful. Although I am not a big supporter of car loans, especially not for new cars. A new car loses 15% of its value the second you drive it off of the lot. So buying a new car, especially with a loan, is not a good idea. Buy a second-hand car, a few years old, and you'll find great deals on cars that are basically as good as a new one. Taking out a mortgage on a house or an investment property is a great investment. While a car loses its value over time, a house will appreciate over time. With all-time low interest rates, often lower than the appreciation value of real estate, Lending out money is basically letting the bank pay you for your investment. 
In the next video, I will show you how you are saving with your mortgage. And lastly, taking out loans for other expenses will probably not be worth it. Other exceptions to this rule are higher education. Some major business educations can be quite costly, but will allow you to make more money later in life, thus earning it back in a few years. Renovations on your house to make it more cost efficient are also a great example. You can place solar panels on your roof, which will pay themselves back in a while. The key takeaway for loans is, if it appreciates or it makes you money in the future, it might be a good choice. If it depreciates or is consumed completely, do not take a loan for it. Another investment that is definitely worth it is to smash the like button and subscribe if you did not do that already. Also hit the notification bell to be alerted when a new video comes out. The more information I can get to share with you, the better your personal finances will be. So it's definitely worth the investment. Step number six, save what is left. If you reach the end of the month with more money than expected, don't just spend it, but save it too. A rule of thumb is to set up an amount in your account to have at the end of the month. A minimum amount, as to say. For me, this is 500 euros. I will never have less than 500 euros at the end of a month. All above that will be saved on the last day of the month. Sometimes it might be a lot, sometimes it's nothing at all. By using this way of saving, you'll not spend your extra money at the end of the month on useless stuff and you will boost your monthly spending. Step number seven, invest your bonuses. Your bonuses from work are extras and they should be considered extras. Do not count on them in your monthly spendings as they might not be guaranteed. I would at least invest 75% of those bonuses to speed up your savings and your passive income over time. By taking these seven steps, you'll be able to save a lot, visualizing how your savings are doing and prevent extra spending by not taking out loans for unnecessary reasons. Next week, we will look at savings via a mortgage, if putting down a greater down payment is useful at all, or if it's smarter to lend more money from the bank. If you have any other questions about savings or other subjects you want me to talk about, be sure to place them down in the comments below. I will see you next week.